Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy and today we'll take a look at just a few subtle nuances when it comes down to Samsung One UI 7 over Samsung One UI 6. And a lot of these I've already become accustomed to and I do appreciate them over the last seven days. So looking at the lock screen of the Samsung One UI 7, I have some really nice widgets sitting right here. There's three of them instead of four because this is a two by one. Uh, and then if you again tap on the clock, you got your basic clock, it stays for 10 seconds, nothing's showing up. So what they did was they made this look super clean. There's no reason to put anything below here if there is nothing running in the background. And if there was something running in the background, it would actually just be right here for the now bar. So taking a look at the settings of the now bar, let's say we go back inside of the settings over here, scroll down to that lock screen and always on display. Here is now bar. So this is what it would show, you know, if there was stuff happening, you know, if there was music happening, it would actually show it modes and routines. And here's some more live notifications. You got your clock, the, the voice recorder. If you have Samsung Health running in the background, that'll also go towards the bottom. Maps, Samsung Notes, and Bixby and such. So again, if we go back over here and we see what is actually being shown towards the bottom, you have music, alarms, routines, and modes. So looking back at Samsung One UI 7, I got some beautiful widgets sitting right here. I could have four, but I have three because this is a two by one. Again, if you tap on the clock, it's just going to be very basic. Nothing on the bottom because if there's nothing really need to be shown, you might as well have it be a clean, simple look right there rather than having a bunch of widgets towards the bottom that is not really serving any purpose because nothing's really going on. So what we'll be able to see is everything happening, you know, happening towards the bottom. So let's say that we go inside of YouTube Music, I play a song. You know what? Maybe we also go and we're doing something with the clock and let's say that we want to start a you know a stopwatch maybe we're kind of working out or something like that now i started the stopwatch but i also wanted to show off something with samsung health so i went on back and here we go we're going go inside of also samsung health so we can take a look at another now bar and one of the things that we'd be able to do is let's say that we scroll on down and we want to do a workout so this is something that would be a part of you know what would be a part of the lock screen somewhere uh, it's going to be over here in samsung one ui 7 as the little now bar on the very bottom so as this is going this is pretty much our little warm-up it's going to get us going through all of this workout here and so now what's going to happen is when we go inside of the lock screen we have everything going on the very bottom so instead of me having to tap the the clock to bring up all of those little widgets over here so again on this side if we have anything that was kind of ongoing and i tap the clock this is what we'd be able to see so if music was being played if alarms was going off or stopwatch any of the routines and such so same thing right over here rather than me tapping on that little clock I have everything right over here on the very bottom and I'm able to switch between all of them. So this is my little warm up. This is going to be my little stopwatch, which I can, you know, from right here, just hit on stop and then I can even close it with this one. This is our music. So this is where I can go to the next song. I can pause it or I'd be able to open this thing back up. And this is where I can do some more settings. If I actually had the buds in, there would be a little icon sitting right there as well, too. Uh, and then also, as we we're talking about from before, we have our little workout. So here's our warm up. We'd be able to go on to the very next portion of it, which is going to be bench press. We're going to do 10 reps, three sets. Once you get done, then you're able to go to the very next step. So pretty much that is the difference between the two here. Even though you might be tapping there expecting to see more, and now when you tap there, it's just going to be very clean and simple. There's nothing to really show. So instead of cluttering it, they actually just placed everything that would have been here down here on the very bottom. Now let's take a look at widgets because they did a lot of changes and updates here. They also added in a ton more widgets from before. So Samsung One UI 7 looks and feels so much better than Samsung One UI 6. You can see over here, this is the exact same note. And this one's more kind of blocky. This is like a rectangle with curved edges. Same thing here. It's more like a rectangle with curved edges. This is like very curvy. Everything is just more symmetrical. It allows you to do more with less space. And it also even shows you more in less space. This right here is daily activity for Samsung Health. This is also daily activity. If I press and hold, you can see it's the same thing. In order for me to actually even reach for it to show me some of the details of walking in minutes and all that good stuff, uh, I would have to expand it this large for me to actually see it. Everything is being shown right there in this little pill form. Now, the other thing that you also notice is that when you press and hold around a widget, there's going to be a lot more space around it. And this allows you to actually change the size of applications next to you. It allows for you to put the name of the widget underneath it. So you can see that there is no, you know, uh, widget names underneath all of these ones. So if you don't really know exactly what you're looking at immediately, you can just read it and you know exactly what it is. 
when I press and hold on this widget over here, it's pretty much being suffocated from the edit lines to the widget itself. There's not much space in between there because there's not much customization you're able to do around the widget. This allows for you to do a lot more, such as throwing the name underneath. Also, I can press and hold on the screen. I can go to settings. Here's app and widget style. I can change the size of the apps. So you can see here, you can change the, the app sizes. So this way, if you want to make it a little bit bigger, you have more space to play around with it because they're giving you more allowance of room around the widget itself. And again, also too, as I mentioned before, you have your app labels and you also have widget labels. So if I was to turn off the widget labels, go right on back, this is what it looked like like this. You can see there's like a lot of space in between there. So you can actually play around with some of these and change some of their sizes. Or what you can do is you can just kind of add in a little bit more. So here's the widget labels. I can even make my applications larger. And so now this is what it looks like. So it just kind of allows you to do so much. And it's kind of fun. You know, you can write like a little note. And as I scroll on down, I'm able to see more of that note in this widget, which again is actually very fun and cool. It's the same thing over here. Uh, I just don't think that it works as great as what it does on Samsung One UI 7, especially with all the different customizations you have. If you do want to stack this one over here, you just be able to simply move it right on over. And then also what you could do is if you want like maybe this one over here to be light mode, maybe you want this one to be dark mode, which it is, you can always just go inside of here and per each widget, you can just change it if you want it to be like a light mode. Uh, I can actually go right over here and for this one, I can make it to where there actually is like no background. Um, so, it, I mean, it's, it's pretty fun. There's a lot of that stuff that you can do over here, but it just works and feels a little bit better on One UI 7. So pretty much what I can do is I can just go right up over here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press and hold, edit the stack. I'm gonna take this widget right back off, bring it down, move it over. And now we are ready to go again from where we were from before. So I'm gonna move this one back over to dark because I like the way that it looked. And now we're back to normal. So basically you have your name underneath the widgets and uh, the way that you can make them all symmetrical and how you wanna you know, move everything all around. You can make all of your different folders even bigger. So this way you wouldn't have to, you know, expand the folder before you actually get into the application. So here on the regular old folders, you have to tap on the folder, expand it to get into it. Here you can actually just tap on the icon and you're inside of there. Now I talked about that there's much more widgets. So let's take a look at widgets and we'll do the exact same thing over here. So when you take a look at widgets, let's say that we scroll on down and we take a look at battery. So when it comes down to battery, we have two different options. Over here it says two, but you have these three and you also have these two. So how about we scroll down, we take a look at uh, calendar. And then looking at calendar over here, you can see that we have one, two, three, four of them sitting there. When it comes down to this one, you have three of them for countdown. You have, looks like three of them for the month view. Over here, you have three of them for today. Here you have three of them for upcoming. You know, when you take a look at, at camera, you have these options over here. So you have three sitting right there. This one pretty much gives you one. When you take a look at clock, we're gonna take a look at clock over here. So for alarm, you got three. Analog clock, you got two. Digital clock, you got three. Dual clock, you got three. And over here, you just pretty much have those four. And that's it. So, I mean, they expanded everything. I can go through this full entire list of anything that is a Samsung application. Uh, and there is just way more. So for this one, I wanted to show you a screen record. This is what I did the other day. And one of the things that I didn't notice until today, playing around with the camera, is with this composition guide, which is that right there. Pretty much any time that you get this thing level, so when it turns yellow in the middle because it's a level shot, you'll get a small vibration letting you know that it is level. Then when you're tilting it up and down and you have that little green icon, uh, what it's letting you know is if you're too, you know, if you're pointing it up too high, if you're pointing it, you know, too low, let me get out of this and show you one more time. So as you're going up and down that little green line, when it matches up with the yellow, you'll get a just little vibration on the phone. The only way I can explain it is if you're somebody who played uh, with the Nintendo Switch and you had the Joy-Con and you're rotating it and maybe you're playing that game where as you rotate it, you are moving marbles like inside of like a wooden box. And your goal was to guess how many marbles was in that box. And every time that you were tilting it down a little bit, if it hit the edge, you would get a small, very small haptic vibration feedback. That's exactly that you what you get right here. So not only is it helping you making sure it's a level shot and you'll get a small vibrate or haptic feedback on your phone, letting you know, okay, now it's level. And then as you bring it up and down a little bit, 
you'll get another small little haptic vibration feedback letting you know that it is a direct line shot of whatever you're trying to take a picture of. And also inside of the camera, if you're somebody who likes to play with additional settings and such, you also have your camera assistant. Now on Samsung One UI 6, if you go inside of your camera assistant, which you are able to actually find this inside of GoodLock, uh, let's say we go inside of settings and it'll actually just show inside of your settings of the camera itself, which is super nice. So inside of camera assistant, we go to those little zoom shortcuts. You can see that they actually added in more. Over here, you only had the option to add in the 2x cropped zoom shortcut. Now you can add in the 2, the 10, and the 100. So now when I go on back, what you'll be able to notice on the camera is boom, now I have all those additional options when it comes down over into zoom. And it wouldn't only just be the 0.6, the 1, the 3, and 5. Now I have the 2, the 10, and 100. And then lastly, we'll take a look at motion photo. Motion photo on Samsung One UI 7 is so much better. So over here, you can see that it is motion photo, but the only way is if you tap right there and you can see the word motion photo. Same thing here, it's on the bottom, but on the top, it gives you a bunch of your tools of what you're able to do with motion photos. And also too, it just captures everything before you actually take the shot. So two seconds before I took the picture was actually a better shot than when I actually tapped on the little shutter button. So it's actually very easy. I can just go right here and I can actually just change the keyframe because again, this one is a video. So if one of these shots over here is something that I would rather have as a photo, then that is what I'd be able to take. So if I wanted something like that, or if I wanted them sitting like this, then basically now that is my new key image. This is now the picture and I'm able to hit on save. You do the same thing over here, but there's much more steps you actually have to get into to actually get that done. And what's nice about it is that it's just all right up over here. Here is boomerang. If I want this to kind of be a little video of a boomerang, and again, you can see that this boomerang will actually be different if I was to use a different key frame. So if I was to go right up over here, I go to the very, very bottom of this little image here, this little small little video. I'm gonna set this one as the key image. I'm gonna hit on save. And then now if I was to create this as a boomerang, it's gonna actually create it from this point. So here's the little boomerang is gonna, you know, fall off, go back on, fall off, go back on. And so in Samsung One UI 6 over here, if I wanted to change my keyframe, I'd go to this little edit button, and then I'd have to go right up over here, and this is where it has all of the different frames for it, and I can actually just change whatever I would like to use as the keyframe, and then that in turn, would actually be the end result of the image. Now, in order for me to take a look at some of the other stuff I'd be able to do, I'd have to pretty much just swipe right on back, head back to this main page. Then down over here, I can actually export this. And so now I can actually export this as a video or a GIF, but pretty much right over here, I'd be able to do the exact same thing. And pretty much whatever you set it as, it's going to keep it as this. So now it's gonna be a slow-mo video rather than a boomerang or a photo or a motion photo, or if I just want it to be just a regular shot. So that's what it is there. And then here's motion photo. So however you have it set up right up over here is how it's going to be in the gallery. Over here, there's a bunch of different edits and things and changes that you would have to do first. So that was everything that I wanted to cover, all of the little subtle nuances of just a few things on Samsung One UI 7 versus Samsung One UI 6. The gallery for motion photo is so much easier to use. You also have camera assistant that gives you more zooms. Uh, you also have the composition guide that gives you a small little vibration haptic feedback. Uh, you know, inside of your camera, all of your lock screen widgets is just basically if it's going to be showing up anyways, you know, over on Samsung One UI 6, if you tap the clock, then that's where it shows. It would actually just now be on the very bottom called your now bar. And then this is just a simple clock that will show for 10 seconds. Uh, and then lastly, the widgets. The widgets are so much better when it comes down to Samsung One UI 7 versus Samsung One UI 6, because now everything is just more curvy. Uh, it's more symmetrical. You can set it up however you want it to look. Uh, and then you're not going to be all like, you know, blocky, rectangular with, with curved corners. It just looks so much better over here. And again, I highly suggest if you've never created folders before, create them and enlarge them. All you'd have to do is press and hold and then you hit on enlarge. So this way you'd be able to make them bigger. So this way you don't have to open it up before you actually have to get into the application that you want to get into. So that was everything I wanted to share in today's video. Hopefully you guys have appreciated it. Maybe you have learned something new in this video that you've never seen on any other channel. If you're watching this video from someone else's YouTube video, just remember to subscribe to Jimmy as promo, head over to this channel over here and watch the content that originated on this channel. Other than that, hopefully you guys have appreciated this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, the more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.